So in today's notes, we're going to take a look at special segments and triangles. But with the constructions, we want to know where all of these segments meet or intersect. And that's called concurrent. Okay? And we'll talk about that when we do the construction. To focus on the altitude of a triangle, another word for altitude is height. And it says that the height or altitude of a triangle is a segment drawn from any vertex of the triangle. So if it says from any vertex, how many can you draw? Three. Okay. So we can draw three altitudes, one from each vertex. But the important thing is that the altitude needs to be drawn perpendicular to and ending in a line that contains the opposite side of the triangle. So I'll sketch a couple. Now I can't rotate my paper up here on the board, but you absolutely can if it helps with some of the constructions. So if I take a look at this vertex, and you can use your straight edge tool, right, to line up your ruler, you want to draw a line so that your tick marks would line along this side. So it needs to be drawn perpendicular. If I pick the vertex at the top, again, if it has to intersect this side and be perpendicular to it. So in the construction, we're going to look for this point. Where do they intersect? And they have names that you'll have to memorize. Now, in a right triangle, you already have altitudes. So you don't need to, so on the next a right triangle, we don't need to construct one of them. So this leg, this vertical leg, is a height because it's already drawn perpendicular. So if we want to go back and put an H over here, those are two heights. And this leg is also an altitude or height because it's drawn perpendicular. And if you guys, again, line up your ruler from this vertex, let's see, if I were to draw it perpendicular, it might not fall exactly right there. I'm going to be close. And that would be the height to that side. When you last year, maybe not last year in Algebra 1, but for sure in middle school when you were given a triangle or when you first learned how to find the area of a triangle, one-half base times height, I know they gave you an obtuse one. So with an obtuse triangle, say from that vertex, when you draw straight down, perpendicular, you don't have a side that it's intersecting. So all you do is extend this side, and it was typically in pictures drawn as a dotted line, and there's the height of that obtuse triangle. One of them, anyways. The nice thing about the construction on the back, or the next few pages, is that if you want to find out where all of these segments intersect, how many do you have to draw, at least? No? Because we want to know where they intersect. So back to this one, I, I could see this dot once I drew two of them. I didn't have to draw the third, but if I did construct the third, it would go right through that point. Okay? Because they're all concurrent or they all intersect. In terms of a proof, okay, if you're ever given an altitude, okay, so in this picture here, BD is the altitude to side AC. When you're told you have an altitude, we know that BD is perpendicular to AC. And that's because an altitude of a triangle is perpendicular to the side it's drawn to. So altitudes give you perpendicular segments. And then from perpendicular segments, you'll have right angles. Okay? Now the median. So as you knew from stats, um, it's the middle number. But when we look at the median of a triangle, it's a line segment that joins any vertex 
of the triangle to the midpoint of the opposite side. So there's your middle. So let's put a dot where we think the midpoint is of this side. So there's the midpoint. So if you take your ruler and you draw a segment from the opposite vertex to the midpoint, that's a median. So if we're going to construct a median today, we have to recall how to construct a midpoint. Okay. So in a proof, when you're told that you have a median, the median gives you a midpoint. So if CD is a median, what point is the midpoint? D. So D is a midpoint of a B. So a median, uh, median of a triangle is drawn to the midpoint of the opposite side. And the last two, before we take a look at a state assessment question, is the angle bisector and the perpendicular bisector of a triangle. And what you're really bisecting when it comes to the triangle, so if it's an angle bisector of a triangle, you're bisecting an angle of the triangle. So just like an angle bisector divides um, an angle to two congruent angles, an angle bisector of a triangle divides an angle into two congruent angles. So you're just going to sketch a ray. Let's sketch a ray, say this one. So start sketching your line wherever you think the middle is, and then just extend it all the way across. So that angle is congruent to that angle. We're going to have to, in the construction, do, to, do the angle bisector of at least two angles. Okay? Um, lastly, the perpendicular bisector of a triangle intersects the side. Well, in order to be a bisector, it must intersect the side at a midpoint and be perpendicular to the side. So let's take a look at this side right here. So put a dot where you think the midpoint is, and line up your ruler and draw a line so that your tick marks line up with the side so that it's perpendicular. I'm just going to do a sketch. And since I'm recording, I guess we'll take a look at number one together. So example number one says you're given triangle ABC with base AFEDC, a median BF, altitude BD, and segment BE that bisects angle ABC. Which conclusion is valid? So let's start with the angle bisector. So in orange, let's highlight BE and that bisects A, B, C. So if that's the case, I know that C, B, E on this side, C, B, E is congruent to A, B, E. And I didn't write my angle symbols. Do we see that over there? No. Let's go to now the altitude BD. I'm just working backwards. Now, altitudes can also create congruent angles because altitudes give you perpendicular segments, which give you right angles, and all right angles are congruent. So here's um, altitude BD. So that's perpendicular to this, and that's perpendicular to that. So we know that BDC 
is congruent to BDA, and is that a choice? Nope. So let's look at the median. So if BF is a median, and it's a median to, I'm going to make that point nice and large, this segment, that means from here to here, A to F, is congruent to F to C. Do we see that? Yes. Yeah. So that's choice four. Okay. So once I start these constructions, some of you will, yes, move ahead. Okay. You only will need to be shown one before you can do all three. And we're going to do the hardest one first. So just keep that in mind too. I thought we'd start with the most challenging construction. Okay, so when we construct all of the altitudes, once again, we only need to draw how many? Yeah. Because we're looking at where they intersect. And that intersection, the name of this point, is called the orthocenter. If you have two different colors, I would suggest that you use the two different colors. It would um, require you to swap your pen or pencil in your compass with another color, but I'll show you why in a second. So if you do have two, I would encourage you to use two, but you don't have to. And I like to, when I'm doing these, highlight the vertex I'm doing the altitude from. So I'm going to draw the altitude through that vertex. All right, so I've never done this up here on the board, so I may run out of room. I can't move that. So let's see. I can move that over a bit. So I'm going to erase that and start here. All right, so we take our compass and we put it on the point. Okay. And you're going to draw an arc because we're drawing a perpendicular line, which is the arc in the X. So we draw an arc that intersects this side right here. Okay, so I'm going to open it up and draw an arc. Well, that doesn't work for me. I'm going to bring it back and open it up some more. And here's the arc. And then the X, using those two points, we take and draw that X. I think I can move. Yep. There we go. So move that to the side. Now, um, when you draw, so watch here for a second. And with my line tool, I can't make it dotted, but I can go back over it with a white pen. So when you draw that altitude, whatever is outside has to be dotted. Okay? And if you continue on the other side, so if you extend this direction, it just needs to be dotted. Yeah? All right, so I am going to put the right angle symbol in there just to note that this is an altitude. You don't have to. And then like I said before, I can't rotate the board you guys can most definitely rotate your paper if it's easier. So if I look at this vertex, it's a right triangle. Is, do I already have a segment that's perpendicular to that side? Yeah, because it's one of the legs, right? So we don't have to construct this altitude because we already have an altitude, so I'm just going to darken it. So the ortho center is right there. 
it's on the triangle. So here's the ortho center. Okay, so I'm going to do it again with the other two triangles and feel free to move ahead. I'll go to the acute one next and I'll start by drawing the altitude from this vertex. Okay, so my compass is going to go there. All right, so compass points got to go here. Remember, this is the hardest one, so if you're frustrated, it will get easier. It's got to intersect the opposite side twice. Oh, I'm so close. What happens if it does intersect? What can I do with that side? I can extend it. So I'm going to grab the line tool and extend this side. Okay, because I need the two points where it intersects. Now I just need to make the X just past that arc. So bringing it over, and let's um, move it out a little bit, draw the arc from there, and then draw the arc from here. Grab the line tool. Again, make it dotted. I have to go back with a white pen and make it dotted after I draw it. Uh, yes. Okay. So here's that. And with my white pen, anything outside, I'm going to make dotted. Okay switching to a different vertex because I have to do at least two. This time I'll do it from here. So I'm probably going to have to extend this side again. So let's put our compass point here and let's draw an arc. Yep. I'll go back and extend. So now at these two points, I'm going to draw the X. It's not going to intersect. So let's open it up. How is it with me using the board compass? Any preferences with this versus the Elmo? All right, so I'm going to draw the line from the vertex through. I'm going to go back and make it dotted with the white pen. Do I have to do both what? We have to draw at least two altitudes. Okay. So from the right triangle already had two altitudes actually, so I really didn't need to construct any, right? We we're just practicing the construction. So in this triangle right here, here's one altitude and then here's the other altitude, and then where do they meet? At the ortho center, which is right here. Okay? There's going to be a pattern. So with the right triangle, the ortho center was on the triangle. With the acute triangle, the ortho center was inside the triangle. Anyone want to take a guess on where the ortho center is in the last one? Outside the triangle. So let's go ahead and sketch that. All right, so I'm going to put my compass point here to start because this is an easier side, I think. I'm going to make my compass a little bit bigger. 
And let's draw, can I draw it here? Yeah. It's fine if your arc was a little, little more farther away from the side. So I'm going to bring it in, and now I'm going to make the X. I need to extend this one a little bit. Okay, so there's one altitude. Whoops, not dotted inside, outside. And then I'll let you guys pick side, the one to the left. All right, so let's use green again. Okay, so I'm going to move it up a little bit because my compass is going to go here. And I need to draw that arc so that it intersects this side that's opposite, which would be that side. Okay, so I want an arc that intersects that side. So let's start it there. And then what am I going to have to do, because I don't see where it intersects on that end? Extend it. So I'm grabbing the line tool and extend. Whoops, I don't want pink. Let's do black. Extend it to get that point. So we're going to be overlapping here. So I'm going to move my paper up so I can make that X. So it's got to go here. I'm glad we're almost done with this one. This one's the hardest. And I'm going to make the arc there. Make the arc right there. Now I'm going to close my compass and get out the line tool. I'll draw it in green. And it's got to go from here to that point of intersection. Now, the trouble is, it didn't intersect with the pink, right? Uh, the whole thing, yes, is actually dotted. Or actually, um, because the whole thing's outside, it has to be outside. The altitude actually stopped there, and then this would actually be the only part that's dotted. But what do I have to do with the pink? Because they're not intersecting, right? So I have to extend it. So I'm going to grab the pink, and I'm just going to sketch it, and you can line up your ruler. So the circum, or rather ortho center here is where? No. So that ortho center, I'm just noting it for your notes, is outside the triangle. Whew. Once again, that was the hardest one. So let's recap. Ortho center for right triangles on, acute triangles inside, obtuse triangle outside. All right, next one is the perpendicular bisectors. So if you have two colors, then do the perpendicular bisectors of two and every triangle. So we'll go do in the one color the perpendicular bisector and all in the, the others. Pause for a second. The name of the point of concurrency here is called the circumcenter. Jeff? Yep. So this construction, that's why I said the other one was the hardest. This is the easiest construction. So all you do is put your compass point on an endpoint, and you 
make sure your compass, the pencil, is past where you think the middle is, and you don't change your setting, you just do the overlapping arcs. So let's actually switch that to green. So I do the arc from here, and then you move it over to the other end point of the segment, and you do the arc there, and then draw your line. Okay, I'm going to switch it to a different color and I'm going to do the other side. So we'll switch it to orange. So we put our compass on this end point, open it up to pass where you think the middle is. Nope, these don't need to be dotted at all, it's only the altitude. And then I'm going to do the arc from this side. Grabbing that straight line tool. And where do these meet? Right on the hypotenuse. So this point right here is the circum center. So just like the ortho center, it's on the triangle. So why don't you take a minute and draw your two perpendicular bisectors um, for all your triangles, and then we'll review them at the end. So I'm going to do them all up on the board. You just pick your two sides to do the perpendicular bisectors for the acute and the obtuse. Guess I'm going in red. Blue. I like using the two different colors so that the arcs actually stand out from one another. And then I'll go back and draw the line segments. This one's in red. The other one's in blue. So here, the circum center is inside. Bless you, bless you. Good, all three, huh? I'll do the last one. Still going to do the left and right side. Close that up. Now where do these intersect? The line tool. Line tool. Where do they intersect for you? Inside, outside, or on? Outside. Oops, I keep doing that.
so the same thing happened. Again, remind yourself with the ortho center was on, inside, outside, and now the circumcenter for the right was on, acute, inside, obtuse, outside. The next one's going to even be easier because you can keep your compass setting the same for every angle bisector, which is nice. So the next one, the point of concurrency where all of your angle bisectors meet, is called the in center. That says something about its location. So the in center is always going to be inside. So like I said, you should be able to take your... So I'm going to go through with my two colors, and I'm going to start with red. So remember the angle bisector is the arc, and then the X. The angle bisector is the arc in the X. So I'm going to do, since I have my red pen on the compass, I'm going to do that for every single triangle. You can keep your compass setting the same, and you do the arc and the X. We're going to draw at least two in every one, but because I'm switching colors, I'm going to go through and do all my red ones first and then grab a different color. Thanks, Nora. All right, so I will close my compass and I'll go back through and draw all of my angle bisectors. So from the segment through that point of intersection, or from the vertex through the segment to that point of intersection, and then from the vertex through that point. Um, you should or can, yes, but is it a big deal? No, because what are we trying to find here? The point of concurrency, right? And your angle bisectors can be a ray, but a, an angle bisector could also be a segment or even a line. Okay? So now I'm going to go through and grab the compass again and do another one, and I'll do those in green. Yep. Yep. So I'm going to do it from this vertex. So I'm going to move it in. And here's the once I wanted green. Why wasn't that green? There we go. Here's the arc and then the X. Here's the arc. And then the X. Last one, the arc, and the X. All right, let's get rid of the compass line tool, and as you're drawing yours, are they all inside? Good. Just got to go through that X. Got to go through that X. And last, through the X. All right, so this one Here's the in center there. In center here. Plus two. And in center here.
Didn't follow the same rules like the ortho center and circum center, huh? It's always inside. And then the last one, which is also an easy construction, is the perpendicular bisectors. So why do we need the perpendicular bisectors when that says median? Because we need the midpoint, right? In order to get the midpoint, we need, it's not called the mid-center, but it is the center, which is called the, the centroid, the centroid of the triangle. So we need to construct the midpoint of each side, which is the perpendicular bisector. Now, if you want a construction where you don't have as many overlapping arcs with this one, put your pencil right now where you think the middle is. And then just open your compass a little bit farther than that so that when you draw the two arcs, it's really, well you could probably even get the width between the two arcs even closer. And then you can always erase extra marks if you want to because that's all we need to see. So I'm going to do that again on this side. Yep. So you put your compass. Oh, i got to make it smaller. Will this work for me? Maybe. All right, let's rotate it. There we go. Put it right where you think the middle is. So maybe, I don't, didn't have a good eye for the last one. Then you draw an arc from this side. Then you move it over, yep, and draw another arc. There, that looks better. And then like I said, you can get rid of some of these marks. What if your, line, what if your arcs don't meet? Then you have to open it up wider. So if your arcs don't meet, you have to open it up wider. And all we're looking for right here so grab your ruler. The only thing that we want is the midpoint. So when you draw this line, don't draw it all the way through because all you need is this. We're only looking for the midpoints before we draw the medians. So what I'm actually going to do, well actually I won't, I was going to do all the midpoints for all the triangles, but in case you want to move farther. Now to finish, the median goes from a vertex to that point. Vertex to the midpoint. Now where do you think all of these are going to be located if it's the center of the triangle? They're always going to be, are they inside, outside, or on the triangle, you think? Inside. So here's the centroid. So finish up with the acute and obtuse triangles, and then we'll do the summary. So I'll do those up here. If you're watching the video, you can pause and then skip ahead. I think it's about there.
Okay, so I did all my constructing. So I drew all my arcs. Now I'm going to grab the segment tool to locate all of the midpoints. I'm going to draw a segment here, and then a segment there, segment here, segment here. So in red, I'm going to put a dot for all of my midpoints. So midpoint, 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 midpoint. So now that I have all the midpoints, I'm going to draw all my medians. So I'll grab the orange again. So from the vertex to the midpoint opposite, vertex, midpoint opposite, vertex, midpoint opposite, vertex midpoint opposite. So all of the centroids are inside the triangle. So to summarize, the back is a quick summary. So concurrent lines are three or more lines that intersect at the same point. Each of the special segments in a triangle are concurrent at a point with special characteristics. So what we did was a bit of an exploration, right? We discovered where all, they, uh, all of the points were. What was the name of the point of concurrency for the perpendicular bisectors? Centroid. Begin with a C. Circumcenter, good. What was the name of the point of concurrencies for the angle bisectors in center? Good. The name of the point of concurrency for the altitude? Orthocenter. And the one we have yet to use, the point of concurrency of the medians, is the centroid. Which ones, which points of concurrency always lie in the interior? The yes, the in center, the in will help you remember that, and the centroid as it is the center. Centroid. Both the circumcenter and orthocenter, they lie um, in the X or in the interior first when it's what type of triangle? Right. Acute. Acute. Oh. <laughs> Exterior when it's obtuse and on when it's a right. 